And what's up guys, Technicals Tinkers here. So yesterday's vlog video, I had the big mound spaghetti printing the chain chomp head, big failure. I didn't even notice this. The belt came off because I noticed that uh, a lot of the spaghetti had gotten caught in the motor here around the axle. And I guess maybe that got caught up in the belt and made the belt slip. I don't notice any damage on the belt, any teeth missing or anything, but uh, I've never had to slip a belt back on before, but we'll get to that here soon. Um, so I did a reprint of the chain chomp head here. And we'll take a look at that. Here is the secondary chain chomp. I mean, it came out a little bit better, but you know, it was printing obviously like this. Right here, not only did it layer shift, it's a slight layer shift, but then it's shifted back to where it should be. Um, and I think this is now like confirmed the, all four of my Cobras do this layer shifting thing because this is heavy. This is a lot of weight because on the failure of the last one, I increased the infill. So the bridging would have, and I reduced the layer height. So the weight is obviously more significant. This is about, uh, this is right at one kilo. A whole spool of filament just for this one model it's about the size of a basketball a little bigger um but i think this is kind of bringing me to a conclusion about the cobra 2 max for reference this is the to size chain chomp pretty cool little model yeah i just uh i made all the chain links printed all of those but this one came out great you know it all snaps to get the only thing you have to glue in are the teeth uh but otherwise you know you print all the parts in the color they're supposed to be in. So there's no painting or anything, which is nice. But I've kind of come to a conclusion with the Cobra 2 Max because all my Cobras layer shift at this point. And I put out a video on how to solve the Cobra 2 Max layer shifting is to rotate the model. I think I might be going back on that. I think the Cobra 2 Max just straight up cannot handle large models, which is kind of a ridiculous thing to say because the, the printer is marketed and sold as something that can print really big models. And I think maybe I'll step it back a bit. You can print large models, but you have to print them really, really slow. And so at that point, why go through the trouble of getting a high speed machine to print large models if you can just get a Creality, an S10 or S5 or whatever it is, one of those 500 millimeter squared plates that go at 40 millimeters per second, if you're gonna have to do the same thing, because I think it's the weight, not the height, it's just the sheer weight of this moving back and forth on the uh, the Y that the machine just can't compensate for. It's just too much weight. And I have my machines, uh, you know, double-sided glued to the table and the table secured. The table doesn't move. It might as well be a concrete floor, maybe a little more vibration than a concrete floor, but the machines are solid in place and it just can't handle it. it uh, big, heavy stuff. It just cannot handle it. And so, I understand I'm in a hobbyist space here. A lot of people have a 3D print hobby. I'm not approaching it as a hobby. I'm approaching it as a business 100%. So looking ahead and looking to scale, I don't want things I have to fix. I want things that work. And I know like in a hobbyist space, maybe a lot of people don't like that. There's another thing I do are remote control cars. And this is a, like 100% a hobbyist space. I don't use those for a hobby either. I've probably had 20 or 30 remote control cars in the past few years. I don't use them as a hobby. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing with them? I use them to exercise my dogs because they are bar none the best exercise for my dogs and fast. They are prey hounds, so they like to chase things. So I get a remote control car and I drive it around. They chase the shit out of it and then they're dead tired after seven to 10 minutes or whenever the battery dies. And so I've actually become a very good driver as well. I'm probably world class because outrunning two whippets. Uh, and juking them and getting around them uh, you have the, it has the effect of making you a pretty good RC driver Point is is that RC is a very hobby oriented thing So when I would have problems with the cars and like post in forms and things like that You know people kind of didn't understand my questions oftentimes I was like well, why don't you just fix this or you know do this or why don't you clean it or whatever Because like I'm not taking my RC car out to the track on the weekend and then all week taking it apart cleaning everything putting it back I run my RC car every single day, at least one battery's worth, at least one, what, 7,000 mAh, uh, you know, 3S battery's worth 
run every single day. And so I'm not cleaning it out meticulously every single day. Spray it out, you know, with an air compressor or just spray it with the hose and then put it away. I run it hard and put it away wet. And so that's why I go through so many cars. But when I would ask people questions in those forums, you know, they're coming from the hobbyist space. I'm coming from the, I'm using this for a purpose space. And, you know, ultimately to me, you know, a lot of people will spend money to upgrade or maintain their cars. Me, I come from the space of, you know, if the car lasts a couple, you know, a few months, three, four months, that comes out to, you know, like a hundred dollars a month or, or whatever, but it has the benefit of exercising my dogs intensely every single day. And so that's kind of worth it. Uh, and just kind of doing the cost benefit analysis there. But hobby people, in my opinion, hobby people don't look at things through that lens. It's a hobby. It's a passion for them. So they don't, maybe we're not seeing eye to eye on things. So as it becomes from the 3D print space, getting off on my tangent, a lot of people coming from the, uh, the hobbyist aspect will be like, well, if you're having this problem, you just do this and that and upgrade this and that and tinker with it. Cobra 2 Max, a refurb is like $280. A brand new one is like $400. That's not an expensive printer. Um, so... I'd rather pay because I'm going looking to scale, looking for something that just works out of the box with very little air, very little downtime. I'd rather pay 600, 700 for a bamboo that just works with no issue, very little downtime, high quality. And that's why I really want bamboo to come out with a large format printer so I can print bigger stuff and just have it work. Because I can't go expanding this business with printers that are going to encounter these errors, especially if I'm getting into printer, printing large things like this. I looked at the Elegoo Giga, Giga uh, Orange Storm Giga. Um, you know, it's a slow printer. It's big, but it's slow, which means you would have to buy a lot of them. And they're like 2,500 bucks a pop, and they're not even selling them right now. I'm sure they'll sell out pretty quick too. So I'm really hopeful Bamboo comes out with a large format printer, something in the range of 500 millimeters, you know, square or cubed. That'd be ideal, something I can just completely replace the Cobras with because it'd be absolutely worth the money to me. Other than that, been doing more research into uh, licensed prints and probably putting, I have a, a small perspective together to, uh, to kind of go over with some of the officials at my company in hopes of maybe expanding into like an offshoot project, sort of an experiment. My main issue is finding someone to run it, having a principal for the project because, yeah, and he, again, you might think, well, why, why is it that you? Why don't you run it? Well, that's just not how it works in business, I guess, or at least in my, in my view. Uh, when you get into business, you've got to think about those things because you are one person, and do I really want to buy myself a job? I don't. I'd like to stay loose and dynamic and able to run things from afar because I still have to, like, you know, involve myself in the other business. I can't just go and willy-nilly up. Uh, suddenly, I have to commit 50, 60 hours a week to the startup, uh, I have to, from the beginning, have someone, not maybe maybe with experience, without experience, I think this is pretty easy to pick up, uh, that can come in and sort of have an ownership stake in it, or at least some uh, version of, you know, be vested in the project. So, and, that, and I'm willing to pay for that because I do believe this has potential, but that's probably the biggest hurdle because machines, easy to buy. As long as you got the money, easy to buy. Files, easy to get. Sales channels, easy to set up. And then it's just a question of time, trying to solicit more sales, but people, it's always people, man. And that's why I think I'm drawn to businesses that are, are, are run by machines, crypto mining, 3D printing, anything where a machine's doing all the work because it eliminates people. People are, they take a lot of time, they take a lot of effort, and they're, they're not consistent. I mean, people change their minds about things. People want different things, things happen in their lives, and you can't account for that. I don't blame people for it, but when running a business, you want stability, you want predictability, you wanna have clairvoyance as to what's gonna happen. So that's why I'm drawn to these types of things, but ultimately, it can't be me, and I know that from the beginning, and I think that's probably a strength, is knowing your own strengths and weaknesses, and knowing that me, I'm not gonna commit 40, 50 hours into something. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm better off, I feel, at the position I'm in, where I'm at the top, kind of looking at it from, from an airplane. So that's the 3D print thing. I know these things are long and boring. No one watches it, but I appreciate all of those who do. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this and like the video. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.